Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to try to do something a little different. I'm going to use King Spray Graffiti in the Oculus Quest 2 and I like to like record the progress of what I did right here. And so what I'm going to do is jump back into the program and I'm going to push replay. So let's get in here and let's see if I restore it and we can push play. So what it's going to do is kind of do a replay of this whole scene and what I wanted to do is kind of use this as a like a camera I'm like the camera guy watching myself paint what I previously previously done and so you can see some of the colors and I can still pull up some of my paints too and paint along it looks like along with it but this is kind of like the progress of what was um, done and so Really what I want to do is just kind of do the outline first and I have a reference on the phone and when you go to your phone it'll show like a little picture on the side and just going with the main outlines. I'm still kind of learning this program because you can hold the little trigger and go to the different caps and most of the caps that I use is just the blue one and so I use the standard and I kind of jump back and forth with that and then thin cap I believe. I play around with some other ones, but not too often. So now I'm kind of like blocking it in. Found some colors. I went in here and really kind of went with, I believe it's Peak Dusk is what I use for that. So just kind of blocking it in within the little sprayed areas. And it's okay like when you get little drips like that on the side because you can always paint them back in on the with the little br not brush but can and so I'm just kind of filling in the area mainly there's just like two colors this this color and then the other on um, the white and the eyes and then painting in highlights whenever I go back into the color I just go to a darker one or a lighter one So as you can see right here, I'm starting to get some of the shapes in. And the little reference had like a bunch of little graffiti uh, reference, kind of like uh, those tattoo books that you see. And you can kind of get ideas to do like uh, tattoos from. So the eyes are going in right here. Let's get a little closer. So it's a little rough because when you paint on this brick it actually paints like it's on brick with the displacement map on it and you actually can see that it goes back and forth on there uh, the tricky part was that I did this sitting in my bed and so I kept running into the to the bed when I was trying to do these lower lines so they're a little rough but at the same time I, I wanted to do this as a test and if it works I might do a little bit more um, of this kind of technique or style of you know just graffiti um, videos and see how they go kind of show the progression of learning this program and getting a little better at it so let's step back a little bit so we can see from a different view I'm just blocking it in I found out like in this program the bigger you do I guess in real life too if you were to do a bigger uh, piece it's a little bit easier to kind of straighten out lines and stuff like that when you do it smaller you're, you're a little bit limited to the spray can and the spray can usually wants to spray pretty big strokes so the bigger probably the better is what I've, I've kind of come to realize with using this program and also it kind of makes me rem remember when I would do airbrushing you do airbrushing, but the thing with the airbrush is that you can actually do those little fine tipped uh, areas unless you had a fat um, tip on it. But even then, you can still get like a little bit more defined details. So it's a little rough. I keep kind of running into the bed at the lower <laughs> piece of this image. And then um, I just kind of go with it. I, I was actually just having fun just sitting down and kind of sitting up in my bed and still doing this I didn't want to really 
kind of break that flow of creativity, so I was just, I was just going with it. Let's jump to this other side real quick. So the other thing is that since I'm in a third person or kind of like looking at looking myself doing this, um, you're not going to see it all like moving with my head as crazy as you would see uh, from the first person view. This kind of gives you a steady camera too, so you can actually see and I can actually talk through it and explain a little bit more what I'm doing. I could probably do two videos and record my audio as I'm doing it, but sometimes it just this is just a playback. So I'm filling in the lower area with um, a darker color. I went in with the, probably this one and just kind of touched on it. And just kind of spraying, big spray uh, gestures on it. Seeing how fun this was, there were some other uh, images. It was like a template of like 50 little characters. This was one. I kind of changed it up a little bit, but uh, it's still kind of true to whatever the original uh, reference was. I like to start kind of creating my own little happy creatures with the big eyes. They're real flowy. And then again, really, it's a lot of it just comes down to like painting your, your character. Let's move this way. And a lot of it's just just going back and forth. I had to keep pushing the crouch button. If you push your button on the left hand, it'll actually go to a lower level because I kept hitting the bed at the bottom and it's kind of like reaching up and reaching down and just trying to make it work. It was just this is just more of an experiment and having fun with it. And I'm just kind of like blending in the color, even though I put the heavy color in, I just wanted to blend it back in. If I was going to get a little more serious with this to kind of do a, a bigger piece or a whole piece, I would have uh, refined it a lot more. But this was just kind of just going back and forth. A lot of it is just highlights and, and putting the dark areas in it and outlining Go, going back in and retracing these outer areas I did want to put like a drop shadow on them but I didn't go that far because I knew I couldn't spray as comfortably under the his legs so it's kind of like a fat marker on there and you can see my hands like this is because my phone is holding whatever reference I'm looking at again I do like that you can go between the pressures and stuff just lower it and raise it. It doesn't go as like low as you think it would go in this program, but at the same time, it's just it, it feels more like a spray can than than airbrushing. Little highlights, little dabs. What I notice is that it doesn't show when I go to my uh, little loadout on this playback and that's pretty cool because really you don't need to see me trying to find a color so it's just a little quicker than I originally painted it but hopefully as I continue to use this program I get a little bit faster and getting some stuff going so you can start putting a little shadow and detail in there and that's what I end up with right there so once you zoom out you got a little happy creature and uh and if I want to go back in, I can keep on painting. I can go back in and uh, if I was just uh, doing outline, I can just kind of spray paint whatever I want on there and just make a, a border around him and just go from that. Or I can just start putting a whole mural of like little guys swimming on the wall and then save it and do whatever. But yeah, it was just a little video. I just want to show like kind of the making of. It's kind of a loose version. It reminds me of when I first started learning to do airbrushing. It's kind of like this real rough uh, type of paintings and then later on I started getting a little bit more refined and better at what I, what the tools did and so as I learn going in here I'll, I'll start learning a little bit more what each 
cap will do and what colors I like. So hope this was uh, entertaining and informative. So thank you for watching.